Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AnimeTutors.com and welcome to this video on calculating the concentration at equilibrium. So in this video we're going to look at obviously how we can calculate uh, the concentration of reactants and products uh, at equilibrium using a set of data that they could give you in a question. Uh, and then from that we're actually going to calculate Kc as well. Now this question is, a, or this video goes through a question which is slightly more difficult uh, in the fact that they haven't given you any um, information or any concentrations to actually work out Kc directly. And sometimes they will give you a table of data of concentrations at equilibrium. Uh, and then you just have to swap that in um, into the Kc expression and then work out the value of uh, Kc. Um, but uh, this example, um, we have to draw our own table. And we're going to use an acronym uh, called ICE, uh, which I will come on to in a minute, and I'll show you uh, why this might actually be really, really useful and will get you so many marks in the exam as well. Now, um, if you're interested in looking at a video that actually gives you all the concentrations and is more of an introductory video into how you use uh, the KC expression, then if you just click on the link below, and have a look at that video over there. Okay, so this example, we've got two CHCLF. So this is a, a haloalkane, and we're going, we're going to produce C2F4 and 2HCl. And the actual question we're going to use is this one. So it says one mole of C, I should say one mole, one mole of CHCLF2 is placed in a container with a volume of 18.5 decimeters cubed and is heated. And the equilibrium is reached and 0.2 moles of CHCLF2 remain. And what the question is asking us to do is to calculate Kc and its units. So the first thing we're going to do is, like I say, we're going to use this acronym. Now, the acronym stands for initial, which is the initial number of moles. C stands for change in the number of moles. And E stands for equilibria number of moles. And what I've done is I've actually written the, um, the actual reagents and products uh, or reactants and products in the same uh, form down here because we're going to use that. And also what we're going to do as well is we're going to uh, put the uh, molar ratio on there. So we're going to put two on there because we have a two there and we're going to stick a two there because that would be useful. Okay, so what we have to do is write down the initial number of moles for each of these reagents here. So we're going to start with um, CHCLF2 first. Now it told us that the initial number of moles was one, it was one mole of CHCLF2. So I'm going to do this in, uh, do this in red actually, we'll stick it with red. So this is going to be 1.0, this is the number of moles initially at the start of the reaction. So you can see that this is placed in the container with a volume 18.5, which we'll come on to in a minute. Equilibrium is reached, and then we had 0.2 moles of CHCLF2. So this is effectively how much we have left, which is 0.2. So this is obviously decreased by 0.8. That is the change in the number of moles. Now that's going to be significant because this has obviously been used up. So 0.2 or 0.8 has been used up. So if we come over to here, you can see we've got a 2 to 2 ratio here. So actually this drop in 0.8 this will increase by the same amount. So you can see here that obviously we started with no moles of HCl right at the start because we hadn't produced it yet, um, but it increased by the same amount as this has decreased. So the change is going to be the same, uh, and so therefore the new value is going to be 0.8, because it's increased by 0.8. Now this one here, obviously we've started with none, start off with because this is another product so we didn't have any to start off with but you see this is a two to one ratio so the change whereas this changed by 0.8 this is only going to increase by 0.4 because it's half the number of moles and again it's increasing because we're producing it it's a product this one would decline because uh, we're using it up so that's why it's increasing so this one is obviously going to increase by 0.4 so at equilibrium we're going to have 0.4 moles. Now all these numbers are the is the number of moles that we have here. Now the first thing we've got to do is we need to work out the uh, concentrations of each of these and then hence work out Kc. Now you cannot use these numbers here to um, uh, put into your Kc expression because these are not concentrations, these are moles. There is one exception when you would use that and I'll come on to that uh, when we actually do the calculation, but we have to convert these to concentration, and that's why we've got this 
over here. So the concentration is um, the number of moles divided by, or number of moles, sorry, times by the volume, uh, and the volume's got to be in decimeters cubed. Now, thankfully, this already is as well, but if it's not, and it's in centimeters cubed or any other unit, you need to convert to decimeters cubed first. That's really, really important. So um, we're going to work out the uh, concentration. So the concentration is the number of moles divided by the volume, because it's moles per decimeters cubed, that's the concentration. So we're gonna write our KC expression, we'll write it over here, uh, and I think what we'll do is we'll write it in black. So our KC expression, so KC is the um, total concentration of products divided by the co total concentration of reactants. So uh, we're gonna put this over here. So this is going to be uh, C2F4, and then the concentration of HCl. And that's going to be squared because we've got two moles of this. Uh, and then we're going to divide it by the concentration of the uh, helomark here, which is going to be CHCLF2 square brackets squared. The square brackets signify concentration. So that's what we're going to work out now. Now, so we've got KC, Right, now, we need to take the number of moles at equilibrium. Remember, KC is the equilibrium expression. So we need to take the equilibrium number of moles. So C2F4 is 0.4. So I'm going to put 0.4 there. And we're going to divide that by 18.5, because that's our volume. Remember, this is how you work out concentration. Okay, and we're going to multiply that by HCl. So at equilibrium, we have 0.8. So that's just going to be 0.8 divided by 18.5. That's going to be squared. I'm going to make sure that's squared. We're going to divide that by the concentration of CHClF2, which is this one here, 0.2. Again, we're going to divide that by 18.5 and put the squared on there. So this, effectively, all these little uh, brackets here is the concentration volume. It's the number of moles divided by uh, the volume in decimeters cubed. Now, if we put that into our calculator, and you've got to make sure that you really are working these bits out. Sometimes it's helpful to work these bits out individually and then combine the numbers because sometimes the calculator might get a little bit, uh, a little bit confused and sometimes you might put in uh, numbers which you didn't mean to because there's so many put in. But you do with it how you, how you want, but it, it helps if you break it up a little bit more. Uh, so you should get an answer, uh, if you put it in your calculator correctly, 0.35. Now, I'm going to come back to this uh, number here. When we said you have to convert these and work out the concentrations, the only time when you don't have to work out the concentration um, and you can just use these numbers, there's two attempts actually, there's two times, sorry. Um, if the volume used is one decimeters cubed, then obviously the number of moles, which is this, divided by one is just going to be this number again. So if the volume is one decimeter cubed, you can just put these numbers in here. Um, the other one as well, um, is that you can see here, see we've got a two moles on the left and then three on the right. Here there's an imbalance of moles, so therefore we have to work out the volume, uh, we have to use the volume, sorry, to work out the concentration. But if we had the same number of moles on the top as we did on the bottom, then the, the volume portion of this would effectively cancel out. So what that means is that we actually, we can just use these numbers here uh, as a substitute for the concentration values, because we assume that all the values or the volumes cancel out in this um, expression. So remember, Kc is just a, a ratio. So that's the only time when we can do that. But because here we've got three moles on the top, there's two there, one there, and then two on the bottom. Because we've got an imbalance, we have to include the volume in here to calculate the concentration. Okay, the final thing that we have to do uh, is to work out the units for this. The units are really important. Uh, a quick way of doing it, if we look at the units for this bit here, this is uh, moles per decimeters cubed, because that's the concentration. And we're going to write it twice for this one because we've got squared. So we're going to put uh, moles per dm cubed. And I'm running out of space. We're going to put that over there. Moles per dm cubed. Okay, so we've got three moles per dm cubed on the top because we've got three concentrations. And on the bottom, we're going to have two. because we've only got two there. And then all we have to do is just cancel them out. 
So this is just a method of working it out really. So we've got uh, one moles per dm cubed there, and we've got one there, we've got one there, and one there. And so what we're left with is a moles per dm cubed. It sits on the top line, so we don't need to do any inverting. So that makes it a little bit easier. So the units for this one here will be moles per dm cubed. Remember these units can change depending on what you've got in your KC expression. So make sure that you work out the units correctly for this. So there's the answer there. Uh, and what does this number mean? Well, what it means is that actually equilibrium in this reaction uh, at this temperature um, is actually lies slightly to the left. Uh, that's because we've got a number less than one, uh, which shows that the bottom number here, it has to be um, bigger than the top number. And so because this number is bigger, that tells us that actually we should have more of this than we do of this at equilibrium. This is not the initial one at equilibrium. But um, there we go. There's your more difficult example. Um, not too bad. Make sure you calculate this properly. This is the biggest sticking point, I think. But uh, if you can get your head around that, then you should be absolutely fine. That's it. Bye-bye.